We'll start in just a minute. I want to make sure that everybody gets uh, a chance to get in here and settled before we start. Good morning, everybody. I just want to remind everyone before we start today that we're going to be recording this session. Um, the recording has already started, and we will make the link available to you in case you'd like to refer back to it as a refresher. So you will be getting a, an end of uh, event email in the next few days, which will have that link in it. I would like to thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. I hope that the information that you gained from us today will be very helpful for you um, as you move forward with the, the contracting process and holding a contract through DGS. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to post to the chat and um, we plan to open the floor to questions at the end of the session. My name is Felicia Campbell, and we also have with us Jared Gancy. We're both marketing managers with the CoStars program, and we have a special speaker with us today, Jenna Gold. And in a few minutes, we'll provide a proper introduction to Jenna, um, but we want to briefly go over a few CoStars items before we get into the meat of the presentation today with Jenna. Um, because the content of today's session is tailored to existing suppliers already on contract, through DGS. I don't want to invest a lot of time on an overview of CoStars since you should already be pretty well attuned to the program. What we'll go over today are the CoStars exclusive contracts versus statewide contracts and talk about what the differences are between those two types of contracts. Um, and you'll see some other options about what may be available for bidding that might fit your needs. Um, we'll also discuss the responsibility of a supplier within the CoStars program and we'll provide some information on gaining help if you're having difficulty accessing the PA supplier portal. So let's start off with contracts. Um, our CoStars members are permitted to purchase under both the eligible statewide and CoStars exclusive contracts. But we do get questions a lot on what are the differences between the two types of contracts. So I wanted to talk about that today. Um, I'll start with CoStars exclusive contracts. There are 36 CoStars exclusive multi-vendor contracts, um, and these are for use by the CoStars members only. The state agencies cannot purchase from these contracts. There are many choices of suppliers with a lot of variety on these contracts, and we award these CoStars exclusive contracts to all responsive and responsible bidders. Um, just a note for the suppliers, with a wide variety of suppliers on CoStars contracts, it is very important that suppliers offer competitive pricing on bids to vie for members' business. Our members typically will search uh, a parent contract to see what suppliers are on there, um, and they look at their pricing first and then decide who to get quotes from. So your initial offer on your bid is important um, to be competitive. CoStars exclusive contracts offer competitive pricing and a supplier's pricing offered on that contract is the ceiling price. Um, you can offer lower pricing through quoting and negotiations, but you cannot go any higher than what's stated on the contract um, through those uh, quoting and negotiations processes. These contracts allow for customization as long as the product and services customization is within the scope of the contract. So now let's look at statewide contracts and see what's different on this side. These are established based on the procurement needs of the state agencies, which may or may not uh, coincide with the needs of CoStars members. So in many cases on these contracts, you'll see a much more focused supplier selection um, than you would on the CoStars exclusive side. There are over 100 statewide contracts that are available for CoStars members to purchase from. These contracts are competitively priced through the formal bidding process and are not open to customization. The specs of the products and services are listed on the contract as they're to be purchased. Any supplier awarded a state agency contract can only sell to CoStars members if they elect to participate in the CoStars program under that particular contract. Um, the statewide contract suppliers who do elect to become CoStars authorized suppliers agree to offer the members the same pricing and terms and conditions that they offer to the state agencies under these contracts. If you're a supplier who plans to bid on an upcoming statewide contract, 
Make sure that you opt into the CoStars program to increase your potential sales by not only selling to the state agencies, but also to the CoStars members. Um, if you can't locate how to opt in when bidding, uh, talk to your commodity specialist in charge of the contract that you're bidding into or contact uh, the CoStars team and we can walk you through that process. I want to talk to you quickly about the guide to CoStars contracts. This is an extremely helpful resource, not only for members, but also suppliers. And Jared and I use this all the time. Whenever we get a question about a product or service and, and where a member can find that, this is our go-to um, document before we actually start the search process. In this guide, um, you'll see a listing of all CoStars exclusive and statewide CoStars participating contracts. And this guide will help you define which contract a product or service can be found under. The reason that I wanted to share this with you today is if you offer additional products and services that don't fall within in your current contract that you already hold with DGS, you might wanna look through this guide to see if other contracts might be a fit for you as well. Um, we have many suppliers who hold multiple contracts. So I'm just going to quickly flip through this guide just so you can get a feel for it. We're not going to talk about specific contracts per se, but I just kind of want to get you to, you know, see it and understand it. So the first part of the guide lists the 36 CoStars exclusive contracts, along with the description of the product and service categories that fall within the scope of the contract. So it's pretty inclusive of what that contract holds. And it'll also show you some exclusions um, in fine print on some of these contracts as well. This guide will help define other contracts that might increase your reach to new customers. And I want to give you an example of how this might be helpful for you. So members in search of, uh, let's say, nitrile gloves have several options for contracts on the CoStars exclusive side to purchase these types of materials. So these gloves can be found on CoStars 12, Emergency Responder Equipment and Supplies, CoStars 19, Medical Supplies, and CoStars 20, Laboratory Supplies. So a supplier carrying nitrile gloves may consider holding two to three of these contracts, um, and this would help them capture more views of their product offering in a member search. So if I'm a purchasing agent for uh, a lab, maybe at State College, the contracts I might search gloves under would likely be medical supplies or laboratory supplies. The emergency responder contract might not be one that I think of in my initial search. Now, what happens if there's a supply sh uh, shortage or maybe my preferred suppliers um, have let their CoStars participation lapse, then I might need to expand my search for glove suppliers and I might then turn to emergency responder um, that contract uh, just to, to get more uh, suppliers as options for me. Another way I might use this contract if I were a supplier um, is looking for... Um, other products or services that pair well with what I do myself, I might look to this guide to help me to find the contracts that would fit with my plans of maybe cross-promoting with another supplier in my area. Um, and then after I find those contracts, then I could search for suppliers under that contract to begin discussing a cross-promotion opportunity with them. If you don't know how to search other supplier contracts, let us know during the Q&A um, and we can walk you through that process and we can also include that in the uh, um, post-event email. So just quickly flipping through here and we'll get to the back. This is where um, the statewide contracts are listed. Um, and these are ones that we call CoStars enabled. And what that means is, the Department of General Services has determined that suppliers are able to elect into the CoStars program under these CoStars enabled contracts um, so that they can not only sell to the agencies, but also to the CoStars members. So remember, suppliers on statewide contracts cannot sell to CoStars members unless they've completed two steps. They must officially elect into the program under the contract and then pay their annual administrative fee. This fee covers a 12 month period and the supplier will need to renew their participation in the program prior to the expiration date of that 12 month uh, period. And suppliers do receive an email reminder from us 60 days prior to the expiration date. So it's not on the supplier to remember when their uh, 12 months is up. If you haven't seen this resource, I do hope that you find it a helpful tool in your sales strategy. And I'm going to now hand over the mic to Jared, who's going to review CoStar's participating responsibilities and also discuss helpful information about the PA supplier portal. 
Thank you, Felicia. Hello, everyone. And like she said, I'm gonna be going over the supplier responsibilities. So you always wanna remember that you do have responsibilities as a COSARS authorized supplier for the terms and conditions of your contract. So the first thing would be uh, <clears throat> to comply with all the terms and conditions of your uh, contract or contracts that you hold. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, only sell the items or services listed within the contract to uh, registered CoStars members. Also, you need to provide a quarterly sales report of your CoStar sales. Uh, you can do this online via the CoStar supplier gateway, and you can access that in the uh, PA supplier portal. And also uh, the annual administrative fees. You want to make sure that you do pay that. That's extremely important uh, so you can maintain uh, your uh, CoStar's authorized status. And also, uh, you want to maintain your current profile data in the PA supplier portal. Uh, that's very important because it's the only way that we can uh, uh, contact you about uh, your procurement process. So moving on here. So now I do want to go over uh, uh, PA supplier portal login issues. The PA supplier portal is the access point to enter the CoStar supplier gateway. Uh, however, the, the PA supplier portal is managed by the Office of the Budget and not the CoStar team. So we cannot help suppliers access their account into the system because we at CoStars don't have access to it. And the reason for that is because uh, this is, uh, system is highly secured and uh, it houses sensitive information uh, about you know, suppliers, companies. And so if you have issues logging into the PA supplier portal, you need to contact their help desk uh, via the email address listed at the top of the screen. They manage all the uh, desk requests via email to ensure they handle each request in the order that they are received. So there's a couple of things that uh, you're gonna wanna need when you email them. Uh, you're gonna need your tax ID number, your vendor number, and details of the issue you are experiencing, including screenshots, uh, if you are uh, seeing alerts or special notes on your screen. Also, if you are the uh, not the current administrator of your account, and want to assign a new administrator, you also need to include the name, the title, the business phone number, and the email for both the chief operating officer, the chief financial officer for your company, or anybody that wants to be the, the or anybody that is the administrator. And also remember that this is a secure system. So the team at the office, office of the budget needs to ensure that the request is approved by your leadership before assigning a, a new administrator. Uh, be sure to alert your COO or your CFO uh, uh, about this, uh, just so that they know as well, and so that there isn't any delays. So now that we have all that covered, uh, uh, we thought it'd be helpful for, uh, for you to introduce uh, Jenna Gold. Uh, she is the Senior Director of Supplier Partnerships and Community Engagement, and she's here to talk about the Procreated platform and how it, you can use it to leverage your customer reviews to help generate leads. So Jenna, if you wanna take it away. Yeah, thank you. And while I am pulling up my screen here, one second. All right. Can you see my screen? Yep. Great. Let me get this up. Awesome. Um, so thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really happy to be here. I'm actually, I was born in Pittsburgh. Sorry to probably half of you who are not Steelers fan, but fans, but I am. Um, so really happy to be here with this crew today um, and always love hanging out with the co-stars crews. So thank you, Jared and Felicia. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about Procurated. Um, Procurated is the ratings and reviews platform. Um, it's a website for buyers and end users in state and local governments, school districts, and higher education. So if you think of like a TripAdvisor for hotels or an Angie's List for home, home construction, this is very similar, but it's a closed site and it's only accessible to public sector buyers. Now, um, no surprise here, CoStars members, CoStars is partnered with us. And what that means is that CoStars members have access to all of the CoStars contracts in 
per curated platform. And they're actually able to go through all of the suppliers on those contracts and read through ratings and reviews from other members when they're trying to decide, you know, we, we have this contract in front of us, there's 10, 15, 20 suppliers on it, maybe even three. How do I decide which one to go with or who to reach out with to? They then come to Procurate and say, okay, let's find out more information about these, um, these suppliers. We also are partnered with the state of Pennsylvania. So we have the statewide agencies and contracts involved in this as well. So a little bit of background on the company. Um, it was founded about four years ago by our CEO, David Yarkin, and he was the past chief procurement officer for the state of Pennsylvania. Um, when David was the CPO in Pennsylvania, he was really frustrated by mainly two things. I'm sure there were others, but one was cherry picked references. So we all know when we apply for a job or you're asked for references, you're only going to provide the best references out there. You're not necessarily going to include that boss that didn't like you or, or a situation where maybe you would have dropped the ball. So that was really hard for David and his team because they wanted to get a more well-rounded understanding of what a supplier's past performance was really like. The other thing that really frustrated him was when um, a contract went to a large national supplier or the incumbent uh, without much more research. So um, he knew that a lot of local suppliers could be doing the job as well. So he really wanted to give um, those suppliers a platform in which they could show that they could handle the scope of work. So at the same time, surprise, surprise, he was using review sites all the time in his outside life. Um, he was using Yelp when he wanted to find a restaurant. He was using TripAdvisor, reading Amazon reviews. Think of all the different places we find reviews. He was using it there. And that's really how the idea for Procurated was born. So before we jump into the nitty gritty with Procurated, I wanna stick on the topic for reviews for a minute. Um, and I'd actually like to see if I can do this. Let's see if I can run this poll. Stop sharing my screen and see if this works. Okay, I am going to run a poll right now that I would love for you all to answer. So the first question is going to be, have you read online reviews before purchasing a product or a service? I'll give you a minute. Okay, I think looks like we're really getting there. All right, about 97% of you are saying, yes, of course we read reviews. About 3% of you are saying, no, never. All right, let's share these results. Here we are. Awesome. Okay. Now, I have another question for you. Let's launch this poll. How often do you read, um, how often do you read reviews before purchasing products or services? Is it always, is it often, is it half the time, is it sometimes, rarely or never? Great. Look at this group, really active. That's exactly what I like to see. Okay. Looks like we got most of you participating in this one. I'm going to end it and share. So a handful of you, about a quarter of you-ish, are always reading reviews. Most of you are often reading reviews. Um, some 50-50, some sometimes, and um, looks like one person is never. Um, that looks about right. So I'm going to um, go ahead and start up my presentation again. All right, I hope you can see that all right. Um, so, the funny thing is, on this first stat, I didn't actually expect for you guys to get that completely um, 
right on the first time. So that's that's awesome. Um, so what we see here is that, um, like many of you, most consumers are reading online reviews before they're making a purchase. Um, I've been working with review sites my entire career. So I worked for TripAdvisor um, at first, and then for the past seven years, I worked for Yelp, and now I've been at um, Procurated, which is also a review site. And I've actually watched this percentage just creep up and up year by year, go from 89 to 90 for a while, sitting at 90, 92, getting finally around the 93 part. And then I looked again this year, and it was 97%. Um, and this group actually just confirmed that. Um, so almost everybody reads online reviews to help determine them which business to buy from. Now, let's think about exactly why that is. We can go to a website and find a list of everything a business has to sell and why they think that they're great. But every website looks somewhat the same, right? So a few variations. Um, online reviews are other customers just like us who have already experienced the business. And it's really just the business's word of mouth reputation. It's just online. We know that government can be a little bit slow to follow, um, but the time has come and Procurated has been around for about four years now. Uh, so public sector purchasers have really been leaning into this and using Procurated to learn more about suppliers' past performance and reputation. I do have one more polling question for you. I'm not going to go through the um, the actual, I'm not going to make you do that again so I don't have to switch out my screen. Um, but I want you to think in your head your answer to this next question. How many of you think that most people go to review sites to complain? And how many people, how many of you think that people tend to come to review sites to um, praise businesses when they're actually writing reviews? I'll just let you think about that for a second. All right. So for those of you who just said most people use review sites to praise, give yourself a pat on the back. You are correct. Um, oftentimes I hear from businesses, I, review sites are really hard for me because I know people just use them to complain. And we actually find that most review sites see stats very similar to this. People are typically using reviews to become brand advocates for businesses. And that makes sense, right? Like if you think about your experiences with businesses on a regular basis, you're typically having a decent to great experience, right? So most of them are going to be neutral to positive. It's really rare that we walk out of a business or hang up the phone with a business and say, that was a one-star experience. Um, and so ratings on review sites tend to mirror that experience distribution. On Procurated, we find that buyers and end users are becoming advocates for suppliers as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Procurated users. Um, in addition to state and local governments, Procurated is also used by purchasers in the education space. That includes K through 12, as well as higher education. It's also used by nonprofits and healthcare. Something to note is that all of our users are verified. So every single user that comes to our site is either preloaded through a partnership like with CoStars, so we know they're a CoStars member, or they are manually approved by my uh, by Sahara on this call, who's helping me out. Um, we ask all of our users to register with their government work emails or their school work emails, whatever that may be, as another layer of protection. And because of this, we really find that reviews that are written on Procurated tend to be more objective than other review sites. So I'm sure you've all seen that person that's just hit all caps and gone off on a business. That is really not what we're seeing on our site. Um, they're not coming on here to rant or to rave or be one extreme to another. Um, they're really trying to answer more objective questions like, was the supplier on time? Did the quality meet expectations? Was the price competitive? All things that are really important to public sector buyers. So just real quick, what this looks like on Procurated as of today, we have about 56,000 verified public sector buyers um, who are users on the site. Those titles are going to range anywhere from a chief procurement officer all the way down to buyers, contract managers, and users. We currently have about 45,000 suppliers' ratings and reviews. Um, chances are your business has a, a handful of those. Um, and there are about 12,000 suppliers listed on our site, probably including yours. 
So we have users in all 50 states. Users do not need to be a member of a co-op like CoStars or part, be a part of partner states as long as they are verified. Um, in, and they're in state and local uh, government or they're in education. They can come to Procurated, they can sign up for free and do research about suppliers. We do have partner states and in our partner states, all statewide agencies are using Procurated and we're actively soliciting reviews for suppliers on their behalf. That is also the case with CoStars. We do that through transaction data. So states and agencies and um, organizations send us their transactions quarterly, we contact buyers and contract managers and end users on their behalf to try to solicit reviews for suppliers. Um, we do have these supply these states listed here. So Texas, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Tennessee, Massachusetts, Maine, Iowa, uh, Nebraska are all using um, procurated statewide. In addition to those states, we have several organizational partnerships. And our most recent partnership that we launched is with NASPO. So that's a pilot partnership with a few of their um, contracts to start. So if you are on an MRO contract with NASPO, a copiers, I can't remember the other ones, um, we are currently pi piloting this with NASPO as well, um, hopefully to roll that out to all of their contracts. So let's just walk a little bit through the user journey on Procurated. So this is how, if we're putting our buyer's hat on, right, we're going to Procurated, this is how we're going to use it. So when we get here, we see this kind of typical search page where we're going to type in either a commodity or service that we need. Is it cleaning supplies? Is it consulting services? Is it translation services? Is it drones? Whatever it may be, we can type it into that search bar. Then what will happen is we'll be directed to of different suppliers who provide what we've been looking for. So you'll see there's a blurb, you can see the overall rating. And then what they do is they can click into these businesses and actually read reviews from their peers in public procurement about what it was like to work with this supplier. In addition to this, so if you think of how CoStars is using this, they have a contract management dashboard, which means that all of the contracts and suppliers on those contracts are listed in a place where CoStars members can find them. They can click into a specific contract and then they can actually just go through the different suppliers on the contracts, see how the, those suppliers are performing within the CoStars contract, and then how are those suppliers performing nationally. Um, they can get a breakdown of quality, pricing, value, service, and really just go dive into compare those suppliers that are on contract. Now, if we zoom in a little bit here, we can just take a look at how your buyers will find you when they're searching for your product or service. So you can see at the top of the page, it was a cleaning supply search. Um, and then the list of suppliers here is gonna be based on what we searched, what, what we searched for, where we're searching from. So if I'm sitting in Pittsburgh, I'm going to get a list of businesses that service my area. Um, and the order of this list is also going to depend on the amount that you as the supplier has filled out in your page. So in a, a few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But it is absolutely imperative that you do that in order for you to index and search um, appropriately or even at all. Um, so this list is going to be based on a few different factors. Now, I just want to do a close up here and show that they can also go ahead and um, select businesses based on designation. We know that a lot of um, governments and schools right now have initiatives where they want to give X percentage of spend to small businesses, women owned businesses, better known, et cetera. So if you are um, one of these and you are tagged as such, you will appear in a list on the side where they can filter down by your business type as well. We've heard that this is a really important tool for the governments. Um, they really love using this. So before we jump in um, and talk about exactly how to do this, just want to talk about really the benefits of having your page. First is just being found by buyers. When you have fully updated your page, all of your information is clear and correct. Um, your products and services are there. They know exactly what you sell you will get found by buyers a lot more than your potential customers who haven't come here, right? Um, because we have eight partner states, because we have a lot of partnerships, this 
this is snowballing. So it's really important for you to get in right now and make sure all of this stuff is up to date. The second is you're able to use this page in sales conversations. You can use this to differentiate yourself from your competitors. As I mentioned earlier, we all know what your website's going to say. It's going to tell us what you have. And that's a really good resource for us. But what are your customers saying? And that's a really good thing for you to take to your potential customers in governments or education and say, hey, I get it. You know, you've not worked with us before. You don't know enough about us. Look at my procurated page. Go read the reviews. They'll tell you better than I can tell you. Um, and that really helps you quickly establish trust with customers, whereas before it may take a little bit longer for you to um, get that, that trust taken care of. All right, so let's actually go on and claim our pages if we have not done that yet. They are free for you to claim. Um, so if you go to procurated.com backslash suppliers, I'm going to actually show you exactly how to claim your page. Let me stop sharing this. Let me get out of this. Hey, Jenna. Yep. While you're doing that, can I just add something? Sure. So just as it's um, important to maintain your uh, supplier profile in the CoStars um, supplier gateway so that you don't miss out, any, uh, out on a, any important information from us about your uh, participation in the program, it is just as important to maintain your um, profile and your page on procurated because, you know, you want to make sure that you're seeing all of your available options um, for the reviews that you're getting. So make sure that you're always keeping your eye on those two pieces, your member, pro or your uh, supplier profile with co-stars and you're managing your page um, with procurated as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thanks, Felicia. So go to, you can either go to procurated.com <clears throat> or you can go to procurated.com slash suppliers. If you go to procurated.com, you go ahead, click on suppliers. You're going to go ahead and click claim your page in the middle of the page and then search for your business name. So I'm just going to use Staples as an example. Once I find my business, I can go ahead and claim it here. Fill out your information, your name, your title, your um, contact email should be your work email if possible. I know maybe some of you are small businesses and don't have one, but if you do have an email domain, it makes it easier for us to approve you. If you don't happen to find your name here, don't worry. Go ahead and type in the name of your business and select create business with this name. Once you've done that, you should probably be getting an email confirmation to go in and actually set up your account. If you've already set up an account, you don't remember your password, go ahead and go back to procurated.com, click sign in, and then hit forget password. Once you're in your account, there's three sections I really want to drive um, your attention to. The first, I like to work backwards. Um, the first is service area. So service area is going to be either the entire country, you can select the entire country, or you can just select the state of Pennsylvania. You can even get down into the counties that you serve. So here, this should be where you are authorized to work, right? So are you able to actually sell to someone in Massachusetts? Are you on a contract there? You know. Don't just select the entire country because that's a hopeful one day. Really make sure that you're putting in what you can do at the moment. Once you've done that, you can select save. And then the next section is gonna be your commodity codes. Your commodity codes are UNS PSC codes. Um, if you don't know those codes or you're having a hard time finding it through the search bar here, you can type in cleaning supplies, for example. And then if for whatever reason you're not finding exactly what you need, you can also type Google UNS PSC code 
and it will pull up a binder for you. So it'll help you actually find those codes. If you have any problems with this that you're running into, email me after this. I'm happy to help you out with it. Um, the other thing to note is it's okay if the exact wording isn't in here. And I'm going to show you how you can bypass that over here. So after you've saved your commodity codes, you're going to want to go to business information. I'm going to start from the bottom here. If you weren't able to find certain keywords that you think are important, scroll to the bottom here under your company description, write a description, including those keywords. So for example, if I sell a very specific type of, I don't know, power washer or I, a power washer in general, and I couldn't find that in the UNSPSC codes, I'm going to write out a description of my business as in at, as if I'm speaking to you, right? So no listing of keywords. It, it's not a good user experience. People are not going to like that. But write it out in paragraph form and include any keywords that need to be there. That will help you still index and search when people are looking for those things that you have to offer. So don't worry if you can't find the UNSPSC codes. Still try to do the commodities part. That's important too. But if for some reason you can't, just make sure it's in this company description. Um, starting from the bottom going up, we also have contract vehicles here that you can select. Um, make sure that you have selected that you are on Pennsylvania CoStars. If you're on any of these other um, contracts, go ahead and select that as well. If you don't see one here that you think should be here or you would like to be on here, uh, feel free to email me. Here's the email, supplier support at procurated.com. And we will submit a ticket and ask our engineers to potentially add that. As I go up here, you'll see a logo is really important, your address, and make sure you put your website on there. Once all of this is done, and I know I went through it quickly, this is going to take a little bit more time for you. I just want to point out that um, this is kind of what your page will look like. It'll show that you're claimed. It'll show your contract vehicles, your, your um, service area. And then you'll also see your overall rating and the amount of reviews that you have. We allow our users to opt into sharing reviews with you. They don't have to. But if they opt into sharing the reviews with you, you'll see the reviews below here as well. Um, we also allow them to be anonymous if they so choose. So you may see some of those, but you can tell if you can see them all based on, um, let's see, where is it? Two reviews, two visible, right? So you may see six reviews, two visible. Um, if you have any questions about those reviews that aren't visible, feel free to check in with co-stars or check in with contract managers or whatever it is, check in with people and say, hey, I know you can't share the reviews with me, but can you give me some feedback based on what you're hearing? Like, how can we improve? Is there anywhere where we're dropping the ball? Um, is there anywhere where we're doing well and they just didn't feel like sharing the review? So, so make sure that you have those conversations as well. Okay, I am going to wrap up in a second here, but let me just jump back over here. Okay, so now what? You get your page set up, it looks great. Um, you've gained access to the account. Now you want to really think about how you can utilize your page to make more sales. And here are a few examples of where you can put in links to your procurated page. So first, you can encourage more reviews. And second, you can use your reviews to instill confidence in your public sector customers and help in the sales process. A lot of suppliers are getting creative with this, and I love just hearing and seeing what people are doing. Um, we've seen a lot of people put it in their email signature. I've seen, um, like this is a good example from Safeware who um, have used QR codes. So they do this not only in their email signatures, but when they go to trade shows, they have a table topper um, that has their procurated score. And then it has uh, the QR code that goes right to their page to get people to look at it and say, see, like you can read these reviews. Or if you are my customer, we go write a review for me. Um, and a lot of uh, people recently have been training their sales team to actually use this in their pitches um, to help them close more deals and get more sales. Um, so again, people love looking at your website, but what do they love more than that? They like seeing people on a third-party website saying how great you are. 
So just something to keep in mind. Um, we do encourage you to ask your customers for reviews, um, especially because, especially if you're starting from scratch, which we all do. Um, so don't be frustrated or deterred today if you sign into your account and you don't have any reviews yet. We all start from the same place. This is where you want to send your direct link to your current and past customers, ask them to get on there and write a review for you. All right, and I am not gonna get too deep into this. You have, you can feel more, feel free to speak to our sales team about this. Um, but something I do wanna point out is because we have the partnership with CoStars, it means we have been, and we will continue to actively drive buyers to your page. Um, so it's worth considering upgrading to a pro supplier, whether you have no reviews yet or hundreds, we have some tools that can really help you convert buyers and le into leads. Um, and this is including banners. There's a contact us button that can go wherever you want it to do to go. Um, you can also put in videos and white papers explaining, teaching your customers. You know, we know that governments and um, schools, they're not professionals in what you do, you are. So you can use these tools to teach them more about your business and why, you know, I was recently talking to Sunbelt Rentals and they said, you know, we really need to educate people on why they should be renting this equipment rather than buying it. Think of what that is for you. Um, and this is stuff that you can use on the pro supplier profile. We do offer significant discounts for small businesses as well as um, women owned, minority owned, um, veteran owned, LGBTQ plus, et cetera. Um, so know that that's a possibility. We do have other um, advertising opportunities. I'm not in sales. I'm not going to get into those. But if you would like to learn more about those, feel free to email me and I will connect you with something that somebody that can help you out. So that's it for me. I know that was a lot. Um, and you may still be going through the process, but let us know if you're having any issues getting logged in, whatever it may be. We're here. Um, my email is at the bottom here, jenna at procurated.com. You could also email supplier support at procurated.com. Um, just a reminder, definitely at the very least, get into this page, make sure that it's clear and up to date. Keep an eye on it to see if you get reviews. Um, if you want to upgrade to a pro supplier, that's really helpful in conversion. Um, and something else that if you'd like, uh, I do these webinars quite regularly, and we recently did one on how to use reviews to sell. Um, and I did that with in partnership with Yelp. So I have that recording if you'd like to have it. And then I also did one called how to get business from school districts and higher education. And we had people on from um, the Department of Education in Michigan, as well as Purdue University in Indiana. So um, if you would like that content as well, feel free to let me know. Um, and I am going to stop there. So Alicia and Jared, would you like yep. to share? So we will now open the floor for any questions. Um, Felicia, if you could put the contact info on the screen, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, we're free anytime, uh, you know, 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can contact us at the number uh, provided. We have a great management te technician, Ray, who loves answering all your questions. Uh, we also have the website where you can view important uh, supplier information and keep you up to date on certain supplier processes and things of that nature. And also we have an email. Uh, this is uh, the way that we prefer to be contacted so we can get back to you uh, as quickly as we can. I man the email, Felicia mans the email, also Ray mans the email as well. So we do get back to you uh, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we also have Facebook, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we regularly post on those, uh, uh, you know, giving our members and suppliers information about things going on in CoStars, deadlines, uh, et cetera. So. We will now open the floor for questions if you guys have any. We see some in the in the chat here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, how can we access the recordings? Uh, I think they're going to be sent via email. Uh, if, if someone can confirm for me if that's what we're doing. Yes, that is correct. Right. So we will be sharing it with, with uh, you guys via email after we 
uh, edit it and all that. So you'll have access to it for future reference. I see a question here. When you partner with organizations like NASPO or NCPA, what does that allow buyers to do and procure it? That's a really good question. So each uh, partnership has a little bit of a different um, goal. So our pilot partnership with NASPO right now, our goal is to drive as many buyers to those contracts and suppliers as possible and attempt to get as many reviews as possible on those contracts. Um, that way, the portfolio, they and um, that's what they call them, portfolio managers, can then go back and say, okay, here's what's going on with these contracts. Here's maybe where there's some holes and some issues um, and see if they can use it in a way that they're monitoring feedback on suppliers before it becomes a five alarm fire, right, on both sides. So they're used to only hearing things about suppliers if things have really hit the fan, right? Um, they want to know about that stuff earlier on so they can work with both the supplier customer as well as um, the agency customer to try to resolve issues early. They also are using it because, because they only hear you know, something if it's gone terribly wrong. They also want to hear what's going well um, about you all and, and how you're doing on these contracts. And um, at the moment, they're not going to be explicitly using it to um, decide if they'll renew or not. It's potentially something that would be in the future. But right now, we're just gathering those reviews and seeing what data we can bring them. NCPA is a bit different. Um, NCPA, we've partnered with, again, to drive as many customers or buyers as possible to those pages. So we're driving a lot of traffic to those contracts. Um, and the goal there, again, is, is similar in that we're trying to get reviews for people who are using the NCPA contracts. Um, so that's a bit more open. Um, and then... I already touched on co-stars, but there, there are a few others if you have any questions. Each state is a little bit different too, um, but ultimately what it, those partnerships does is it really opens up access to all of the agencies, all of the buyers, and we're actively trying to solicit reviews on behalf of those organizations. Um, there's one here that says, what do I do if I have multiple companies that we own with CoStars contracts and I manage them all from my same email address? Mm -hmm. I'll answer the procurated version of this if, if that's okay. And then if I don't know if Felicia or Jared, you have another answer. Um, on procurated, make sure that if you're, um, if you, so if on procurated, it's different. It's, you're not necessarily listed as, like if you're the same business, you're not gonna be listed in separate places because you're on separate contracts, right? So if you own more than one business though, uh, procurated, you're gonna wanna claim those pages with different email addresses. Um, so that's how you'll wanna do it on procurated. But if you run into any issues, email me. It's just Jenna, I'll put it in the chat right now. Any answers from your side, Jared or Felicia? Did I interpret that right? I believe that's correct. I think if your multiple companies have different business names, um, I would think you would want to claim each page individually as the business name. Um, I don't know how the same email affects the Commonwealth systems. I know if you were on the member side and registering for username and password, for the member side of the CoStar system, you have to use a unique email. It can't be used more than once in that credentialing system. But I don't know how that works on the supplier side if you can use the same email address across different businesses. But I would definitely think on the procurated side, you would want to claim each business name separately as a different page. So you're not missing out on any... Uh, uh, reviews and readings that you'll want to keep your eye on. Jason, um, the, the question was, how long will it take my business to get approved after claiming? Sahara is actually in the queue right now trying to, to approve people. Um, so if you've gone through the process and you've gotten the, you've gotten a message that says um, your page is waiting to be approved, 
she's she's trying to do that right now. If you do this at a later time, it may take 24 to 48 hours to be approved, but we, that's why we have Sahara here. Um, can you try out for curated pro? I don't believe so, but you can, that's not a question for me. That's a question for our sales team. So uh, we can get you set up with one of them. They can, they can go through that with you. I see a question from Melissa Gelwicks, um, and I think she's, it's a contract question with DGS. Um, how do you add new manufacturers to your list? Um, I think, and if you're talking about your contract itself, I would contact the commodity specialist in charge of your contract um, and let them know you want to add manufacturers and they can walk you through that process. Um, and then I also saw what is the difference between ITQ and your standard co-stars contracts and how do you utilize it? And ITQ is an invitation to qualify. So rather than putting in a bid for something because ITQs are service um, contracts, uh, you're not necessarily going to have a price per se for what uh, your offer is because you'll need to know the specs of the project before you can uh, do pricing on that. So the invitation to qualify is providing all of your experience and um, technical capabilities uh, to be awarded that contract. And that's uh, those contracts are more of an evergreen type of thing where uh, new suppliers can go into the ITQ at any time, uh, whereas many of the standard contracts on the statewide side have a bidding window. And once that window is closed, then those are the only suppliers that can be on those contracts through the life of that contract, whatever the expiration date is. Um, CoStar's exclusive contracts are more like the ITQs in that they're evergreen, but those are ones that you're listing out your manufacturers and the product categories and your pricing standards. Um, so they're not exactly like ITQs other than the fact that they're evergreen. Um, let me know if that didn't answer your question. The ITQs, you'll just need to um, go into Jagger, which if you look at our supplier service center, um, there is an ITQ area on that uh, supplier service center page, and it tells you how to um, register within the Jagger system and then fill out the ITQ um, uh, pre-qualification questionnaire and then get, get started on submitting your bid for that. So somebody asked, when will buyers list uh, be updated within CoStars? There are hundreds, if not thousands of outdated contacts still listed. Uh, in order to get those who use CoStars to go review the appropriate page, I need an updated list. We are very aware that uh, some of our member, uh, our member profiles do not have accurate uh, contact information. We have been diligently working to fix the problem. And the problem is that the CoStars members don't have to renew every year like the suppliers do. So they only have to do it once. So a lot of them only uh, put their contact information in once. So, you know, we may get emails that are outdated, that are no longer in use from someone in the organization that's no longer there or uh, phone numbers that are no longer in service. So we are diligently working to fix the problem. If you contact us, we can give you an updated list that doesn't have any uh, uh, undeliverable emails on it, just so that if you wanna send out a mass communication or do anything like that, you don't uh, get that. We would, we would need to check on that because the uh, CoStars members have the option to opt in um, or out of certain ways of being contacted. So I don't know that we would want to just send that uh, deliverable email uh, list out um, without looking up their information and see what they're um, right. They but I was, in and out of. Oh, I was under the impression that when we generated that list, it was already the people that opted into it. I guess I was mistaken. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's true because we're generating that list for our needs and they don't opt in or out of uh communications from co-stars. Right. So okay, I, I think the list... what I just said. <laughs> what's that? I said scratch what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but we can certainly try to help you um find out, you know, updated contact information for specific um members that you're looking to reach uh, and then we can find out if they've opted in or 
out, but that's not on a mass scale. That's more on a, a smaller scale. I also saw somebody wanted to explain further the only sell items listed within the contract to DGS registered CoStars members. So that's actually, that sentence is a two point sentence. So the very first thing is, um, let's say you're a company that sells, um, let's say maybe nitrile gloves and masks and cleaning supplies. Well, and I'm just talking off the hip now. I don't know exactly what's on our janitorial supplies uh, contract, but let's say the nitrile gloves and masks are not part of the scope of that contract. So you can only sell the cleaning supplies that are part of that contract scope under that contract. You would then uh, not be able to sell the masks and the gloves unless you held a contract that those pieces were part of that, which is why I was talking about Many of our members hold multiple contracts because their lineup of uh, product categories are larger than the scope of one contract. So I hope that helped answer that first part. And then the second one is you can sell to whoever you want, but for it to be a co-stars sale, they, it, the sale needs to go to a registered co-stars member. So they must have a member ID, which they're supposed to, when they're writing a PO and submitting it to you, they're supposed to not only put your contract number on the PO, but also their member ID. Um, so if you sold to somebody who didn't have a co-stars membership, um, they can't uh, not follow the PA procurement code in that purchase because um, your contract with DGS does not apply to them. So they're not covered under how we uh, bid those contracts out. Um, we do satisfy chapter 19 of the PA procurement code, but them not being a member, that doesn't apply to them. I hope, I, I don't know if I'm saying that um, clearly enough for you, but I hope that made sense. I did get a question that I'll repeat um, was, is this, can, can your procurated page be managed through your CoStar login? No, they are two separate things. Um, so you will want to use procurated.com slash uh, suppliers to get into your account there. Um, when buyers go to procurated, they're either coming directly to us, but there's also a procurated link on the homepage of the CoStar's website. Jenna, did you already answer Nancy's question about small diverse business? Oh, I, I did not. You did not. I think that question is actually regarding your platform. Yeah, I think so. Too. Um, sorry about that, Nancy. Um, so the small diverse business, as long as you are certified as such, you'll be able to see it when you log in. So when you log into your account, you should be able to see the designation if you're designated in that. If you don't, email me because we will we'll make sure we get you tagged. It's something that we don't allow people to self-select for reasons that, you know, the government just really doesn't want people self-selecting only to find that they're not actually small diverse businesses. Um, but we will do our dil due diligence to um, confirm that and, and get it on there. And that goes for anybody that's like a registered um, veteran organization, woman organization, any of that, same answer. If you log in and it's not there, but you are one, let me know. So Jenna, there's a question here um, about how people in the public sector know to use procre Procurated. Yep. So I know like we do these types of webinars to CoStars members. I'm sure you're doing that with your other partnerships with NASPO and such. Um, what other kind of marketing do you have to the, the uh, public sector? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, before I started this team at Procurated, I actually oversaw um, a team of community managers that specifically work with the public sector. So it is their job all day, every day to be going and speaking to states, um, counties, universities, um, organizations, you know, whatever it may be, they're out there in the trenches actually talking to governments 
um, and education establishments at all times. Um, and that's how we have our eight state partners actually, because we've gone out and we've um, educated people one-on-one. -on -one. We bring in entire procurement teams. We also do a lot of marketing, a lot of education because of our team is made up of a lot of people in past procurement. So they have a lot of connections where they're able to get us up to the table with different organizations. So PASHI is a good example that I can't remember what PASHI stands for, but I know it's like the Pennsylvania State education. System of Higher Education. Thank you. Yep. So we're, we're partnered with PASHI as well. Um, and we get there. So we every time we partner with states or an organization or an agency, we educate all of their buyers and end users on how to use the platform. That's why we have about 56,000 users at this point. And that's a, a number that's constantly growing. Um, but yeah, so for the one person doing this education, we actually have seven people doing education on the um, the government and education side of the business. Well, and I think the more that our contract holding suppliers use Procurated as part of their sales strategy and, you know, showing their reviews to your potential clients in the, the public sector, I think the more you're doing that, the more they're going to become aware of it and then want to you to use it themselves as well. So I think you're part of the whole marketing strategy of this because it's not only a, a sales tool for you, but also a great tool for the purchaser as well. Yeah. We go to a lot of the large conferences. We're actually going to the NIGP conference in Pennsylvania in two weeks. Um, so if you're there, stop by and say hi to us. I won't personally be there. I'll be at a different conference, but we do a lot of that type of um, education and outreach as well. Oh, and just so the suppliers on here know, there is a challenge right now that's out to our, our yeah. membership to drive um, ratings and reviews. It's an East-West challenge, uh, you know, basically Primanti Brothers versus cheesesteaks and things like that. Um, Pittsburgh or Steelers and Eagles head to head match. Um, so I think it's NGIP is, am I saying those letters correctly? NIGP. NIGP. I believe that's where um, it's going to be announced, um, you know, East West who won the challenge on the most ratings and reviews. So uh, they're doing some really creative things as well to try to drive some more, um, you know, traction on the platform with the members leaving reviews and ratings so yeah and that's that's a fun way for us to do it with public sector mm -hmm. right we can't we can't give them anything but we can get them pumped up about contests that actually has been a really successful contest amongst public purchasers and buyers um to see how many reviews that they can write on behalf of the east or west part mm -hmm. of the state um and they're neck and neck with several hundred reviews on each side of the Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't heard an update on that. Yeah, we just looked at it a couple of days ago. <laughs> Anything else? Here we go. So, you know, suppliers on this call, you might want to use that challenge as a, you know, a way to open that door for the conversation to your current client list who are CoStars members and say, hey, I hear there is a East West challenge. You might you know, I'd love you to review, you know, what I've done for you in the past and, you know, really help to generate those reviews on your own behalf by your current clients. And then maybe they can, you know, if they're East or West, that might help bolster their chances of winning the challenge. Um, I did get your request, Michael. I will definitely send you the um, university's webinar recording. Um, where do we get the link to provide customers so they can review us? Good question. Um, let me see if I can exit out of this. Okay. My PowerPoint is acting up. Let me share my screen if that's okay. <clears throat> okay, so 
PC. You see my screen? Yes. Procurated.com slash review. We'll give them this page where they can come and write a review. They'll just have to look up your business name here. And then they can add whatever contract information. So if they're if they, they've purchased from a um I'm I'm signed in as a Massachusetts user right now. So that's why that's happening. But if they're signed in, in Pennsylvania, they can select co-stars um, and then they can write the review here. They'll be asked after they do this to just set up a login. Um, but you can also just um, link to your page. So once you've created your page, that's you can grab that URL at the top of the page, log out and put it into a another screen and it should show them your public page and then they can log in and read your reviews. Um, but the, if you want them to review you, you can just do procurated.com slash reviews. And we can include this in the follow-up as well. I see a question from an, an anonymous attendee and uh, I believe this is a co-stars question. How long should it take to hear back when we reapply for a contract that's expiring? I believe this question is actually um, regarding our e-bidding platform that we just rolled out in February, which required that all expiring CoStars exclusive contracts, um, those suppliers need to rebid through the electronic bidding process. So that typically takes from the time you hit the submit bid button, um, it's four to six weeks to go through the approval and award process. Um, I do want to just make sure everybody on this call understands that that window gets tighter the quicker you are on responding to anything that the commodity specialist has um, told you about your bid. If you need to go back in and update this or change that, the faster you are on that, the shorter that window um, gets. So I would definitely monitor your emails from for your uh, anything coming from your commodity specialist. So four to six weeks is the official answer. I, okay, great question, Ben, um, especially coming from review sites. The question is, there are two sides to every story. So if I go to your site and see an unfavorable review, can resp re we respond to it? Um, the short answer is we are actually working on that internally right now, figuring out how to give you guys tools to be able to respond to that person. So if you log in today, there won't be a way to do it, um, but we're actively working on that. Um, with that said, just a comment about critical reviews is that they happen. Um, it's in inevitable, inevitable whether you're looking at them or not. Everybody's business is going to get an unfavorable review at some point, and we understand that because that's we're people behind a business at the end of the day. Um, something that's always been really surprising is Yelp did a study when I was when I was working there about which businesses actually make the most money from review sites. And it was actually four and a half star businesses as opposed to five. So four and a half star businesses actually make more money from review sites than five star businesses. And why is that? It's because we know that we can't all be perfect. And sometimes if we look at an overall five star rating, it's perfect. It's too good to be true, right? So I'm sure you've seen some of those on maybe websites before and you're like, I don't know if this is real. Um, so do keep that in mind. With that said, I love the way that you asked the question, Ben, because yes, on any other review site that gives you the opportunity to respond, do it. It is very, very helpful. Um, and that is why internally we're trying to figure out the best ways to allow you to respond as well. Something to keep in mind is if it's like a really horrible review, and I'm talking about other review sites at this point, but potentially ours soon. Um, your response, your public response is always like the thanks for your feedback, the things that you would want people to overhear you saying if there was an issue in your business and there were other customers standing around listening to how you're dealing with it, right? Thanks for your feedback. Sorry that happened. Um, and then take it offline. So if you're going to give them something, if you're going to refund them for anything, that's what you want to do directly behind closed doors. So you don't encourage other people on review sites to try to use it to get to take advantage of you. 
Um, so that public response is really just for potential customers to see that you've responded. And then that private response is really to actually work through any issues that you may be able to um, amend on your end. Um, but all in all, yes, we are working on a way to allow you guys to respond on our site. And, you know, the not super negative, because sometimes those are more emotional, I think, than um, really viable reviews. But sometimes the ones that are not uh, stellar reviews stink. But at the same time, they're valuable information for a supplier. They, you know, the supplier management kind of gets a window into where are we kind of dropping the ball and where do we need to focus our efforts to increase our customer service. So, really? you know, use that as a tool. Yeah. Yeah. Only 5% of customers ever complain in a place where we can actually find it. That means 95% of our customers are leaving and going and talking about it, but they're not leaving a review. They're not calling the manager. They're not sending an email. Only 5% of people that do that. So these reviews are your canaries in your coal mine, right? If you yep. start to see patterns come up that there's an issue in one certain place with one certain rep, that's a pattern that you want to pay attention to. If it's that something keeps breaking or it's not working as expected, pattern, right? So it's really important for you to look at these as just like Felicia is saying, a business tool to help inform you on how to improve your business. Canary in the coal mine was such a perfect metaphor. I love that. <laughs> I, it, you know what? I, I didn't make it up. There's a book called Hug Your Haters by Jay Bear, who really just talks about how to handle Yep. And utilize online reviews. So I can't take credit for that one. I've seen him speak. He's phenomenal. He is. He is. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for coming, everyone. It's been fun. Um, like I said, my, my email is in the um, chat. Uh, if you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out. Even if you want to jump on a call and say like, hey, did I do this page right? Um, that's what I'm here for. And I hope you have a great day and the rest of your week. Thank you all. Uh, Jason, this recording link will be included in the post-event email, which will be coming in. Um, I would hope by the end of the week, uh, we'll be sending this to everyone who attended. You're welcome. Thanks.